Hello and welcome to Drive New Business with Social Media. My name is Ken Countess and uh, we're glad that you're with us today. I just want to let you know that we are recording this event. Uh, here's my question for you. What do you want to improve about your marketing? And when you're deciding on a marketing campaign, what is it that's most important to you? What is it that you want to have happen? And when? With any marketing campaign, there are three points that you have to have happen in order to be successful. The first is that, of course, you want to generate leads. The second is that you want to increase traffic to your website or to your physical location. And of course, after you've got those prospects in hand, you want to convert to a sale. This webinar is presented by the Countess Group. We help you gain an unfair advantage over your competition. We are now in our 18th year and we're based in Orlando, Florida. What we help businesses do is gain an unfair advantage over their competition with targeted marketing campaigns. We don't believe in the spray and pray approach that so many organizations uh, do. Uh, we target the market for you so that you spend less money, you reach the market that you're looking for, and really help you achieve your results. I have a question for you. I'll be launching a couple of polls during the course of this event. If you're watching us live, here's the first one. Have you previously attended a Ken Countess seminar or webinar? Go ahead and select one of those uh, three options. Uh, click the Submit button. Okay, so here's what you said. Uh, thank you to all of you that are joining us today. Uh, we're honored that you've taken time out of your day. It's unusual that uh, people that are attending are with us just for the first time. Uh, but once again, we're delighted that you're here with us today. The Countess Group is a full-service marketing consultancy. We help with executive coaching, marketing training, keynote speeches, strategic marketing and communication plans, email marketing, social media, websites. We build very high-performing websites. If you need help getting more traffic to your site, it may be simply a matter of search engine optimization. We can help you with that. Paid advertising, PR, and much, much more. My name is Ken Countess. I'm an internationally recognized marketing expert. Uh, I spent over 25 years of my career at Fortune 100 companies, names you probably know, like Motorola, Marriott, and a company that's now owned by CBS. Uh, as I mentioned, the Countess Group is now in its 18th year. Previous to that, I was a partner at Ascend Marketing in Dallas, Texas, and I've also worked at other businesses along the way. Over our 18 years, these are some of the clients that we've served. You see logos of some of the better known companies, but mostly we work with small to medium sized businesses and nonprofits, probably just like yours, just like ours. I know what it's like when you're working at a small business, you're worrying about it 24 seven. There isn't any real time off for a, a small business owner and sometimes for people who are working at those businesses too. Uh, so we're here to give you a hand. We've got the expertise. We've got a team of people that can really help you get your job done and help you make more money. Here's my contact information as a thank you for attending today. And if you're attending us on a replay, uh, we'll go ahead and send a complete copy of everything that you see on screen, uh, including our contact information. I encourage you to reach out to us at any time, whether by phone, email, on the web, or on social media. There are over 6,000 people currently following us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash the Countess Group if you'd like to add your name to that group of people. Uh, we post uh, marketing information there several times a week. Many of you are probably also on LinkedIn. Uh, there it's linkedin.com slash in slash my name, Ken Countess. Uh, there are over 4,000 people are already following us. And once again, they're following us because they're looking for the up-to-date marketing information they need in order to make more money. So I'd encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn as well. 
and uh, will help you grow your business. But right now, let's talk about driving new business with social media. That's what we're all about this afternoon or morning or evening, depending on where in the world you're watching us from. I want to start out by asking how many of you were in business five years ago or maybe even 10 years ago? Go ahead and raise your hand using the control panel. If you've been in business for five years or more, go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, thank you. Uh, by the way, if you're not sure where the control panel is, it may be hidden from your view right now. It's over probably on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, there's a, a, an orange arrow that's pointing either left or right. Go ahead and hover over that, and that will reveal a way for you to raise your hand. So thanks uh, to those of you who have done that already. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Five or ten years ago, how much did you rely on social media to help your marketing? Well, probably not very many of you because social was really just getting underway then. What I want to share with you is a typical sales funnel using traditional marketing methods. Things like print ads, radio, TV, direct mail. This model is all about your reach. Reaching out to find new customers. With many funnels, as you can see here, it's bigger at the top, which is where you spend a lot of your time, your money, and your energy in this model. And it makes sense. You reach out to as many people as you can, convert a certain percentage into paying customers, and maybe even keep a few of those people, mainly because so much of your time went into uh, the reach at the beginning, you've spent a lot of time, money, and energy. And the problem with this traditional funnel is it's expensive. Those ads cost a lot of money. And it's hard for a small company or organization to compete in this landscape. Digital marketing tools, like social media, have completely flipped the funnel. When you begin to use these new marketing tools, like email marketing, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, events, surveys, you're reaching out to people you already know and letting them spread the word to potential new customers. And through this new funnel, you grow your business through repeat customers and referrals. And at the end of this marketing day, it turns out it costs less and takes less time and energy because you're not relying on marketing to strangers. You're building from the group of people who already know and love you. In this new marketing world, you spend less time finding new customers and more time engaging your existing happy customers. Social media in combination with email and other online marketing activities really has leveled the playing field for smaller organizations like yours to compete with the big folks. Word travels quickly on social media, doesn't it? And more importantly, people trust the reviews they see on social media. So let me ask you this question. How many of you have learned of a business, event, or nonprofit because of something you've seen, posted, or shared by a friend on social media? See, one major advantage of social media is that people usually have friends and family who are like them. So if a bunch of your loyal customers like you on Facebook and they share something about your organization to their own friends, chances are you'll be getting extended visibility among a very targeted audience for your business. The more they share about you on social media, the more their friends, family, and peers will see your name ultimately helping you get in front of potential leads without spending any extra time or money. Sounds good, doesn't it? With the rise in social media use over the last several years, many businesses are seeing some really great results from their efforts. In fact, one study showed that 78% of people say that a company's social media use influences their purchasing decisions and social media interactions play an important role in their decisions as well. In fact, 73% of consumers are likely to buy from a brand that responds to them on social media. Customers tend to ask a company questions using social media, so it's a great way to interact with them. 
And social media is also important for showing support to nonprofits. In fact, 84% of nonprofits share information to help further their cause. This is all good news for you and me, because as a small business or as a nonprofit, you already have strong, authentic connections with your customers, donors, or members. Big brands don't have the resources to create personal connections with their audience like a small business can. And that's one major advantage of being local or small. You're able to interact with your audience on a personal level. And that's a perfect dynamic for social media. Social media affords you the opportunity to stay in touch with current and potential customers, even when they're not visiting your store, purchasing your services, or interacting with your nonprofit. You can nurture those relationships and continue to expand new relationships. By posting and interacting regularly, you'll increase brand awareness and you'll stay top of mind. The truth is, you've got to be where your existing and potential customers are. And for the majority of small businesses, that's email and other social media. I say other social media because email really was the first social media there was. It's been around since the 1980s. Email allows you to directly reach your audience, and social media allows you to amplify your efforts. With social media, you'll have the opportunity to grow your business by generating new leads and build and nurture new relationships. All of this effort will get more people to know, like, and trust you. All of this is important in helping you grow your business, so let's take a look at the topics I'm going to cover over the next half hour. We'll talk about some of the most popular social media sites and how you can decide which to use for your business and how you'll begin to expand and grow your networks. And once you're up and running, the content will be an important aspect in engaging your audience. And after that, I'll dive into social media advertising. I'll go over the basics of how it works and some of the different tools. And we'll talk about utilizing social media to grow your mailing list and how you'll use email marketing to further nurture your relationships. And last but not least, we'll talk about important metrics you'll look for in order to determine your success and further optimize your social media efforts. Sound good? Raise your hand if it does. Great, thank you. So let's talk about the uh, top social media sites to kick things off. There are dozens of social media platforms out there, and part of this workshop is about understanding the benefit of each platform. So you can determine which one is right for your organization and for your target audience. You're likely already using email to communicate with your audience, but you'll want to start choosing one social media platform that best fits your business and where your audience is. Once you're more familiar and have a strategy that's working, you can choose another platform. So let's break down some of the most popular platforms to see the different types and what they're used for. We can group the top three social sites into three general categories. Take a look at your screen right now. If you're checking email or something else, go ahead and uh, take a look at your main screen. The first thing is networking. These types of platforms allow individuals and businesses to connect with others and share content. Some are focused on business networks like LinkedIn, whereas some are best known for their personal relationship building like Facebook and Twitter. And all of these platforms are designed for content sharing between connections. News spreads like wildfire on these platforms because of the ability to easily connect and share with others. How about photo sharing? These social media sites are highly visual with the use of images. Studies show that imagery tends to create positive emotions in people, and the rapid increase in the use of smartphones has contributed to this trend. And not only can phone users easily take quality pictures with their phones these days, but with the help of social platforms like Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat, 
they can quickly, if not immediately, share their images with others. Plus, sometimes it's easier to view visual content than it is to read text. And how about video sharing? While other platforms allow you to share videos, these sites are strictly video-based. Video is one of the most powerful online tools for business, but it's often seen as a challenge because it takes a little bit more time and effort. But the booming popularity of streaming makes it hard to ignore the potential of video for your business. For example, over 6 billion hours of video are watched on YouTube each month. That's an enormous potential audience. So let's see a show of hands. How many of you are using at least one of these social media platforms for your business or organization? Raise your hand. That's great to see. It's important to know that you don't have to use all of these. You'll want to determine which of these might be the best fit for your audience and your business in order to create an effective social media strategy. So let's discuss a few more of these sites in depth. And I'm taking a look at uh, who's watching us live, and I see, among others, Carl and Haley and Kelsey and Les and Melanie and Thomas. All of you, great to see you here and the, everybody else as well. Great to see you participate, and I hope you're getting a lot out of this event thus far. Uh, by the way, let me know in the chat box which one of these social media channels you're using most. Go ahead and use the chat box or the question box, whichever version of GoToWebinar you have, and let me know which of the social media channels you tend to rely on the most. As one of the initial, more popular social networks, Facebook allows your business to be more discoverable and connect with your audience. And you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with your audience or your customers or members who then have the ability to like your page and read the posts that you share. Another great benefit is that your customers can check in when they visit your location, which gets shared to their friends' newsfeed. Looks like most of you are using Facebook, and we've got a few using LinkedIn. Those do tend to be the, the top social media channels that people are using. Facebook itself is very flexible on the type and length of posts that you can share. And for best results, we recommend using 40 characters for a status update and 30 to 45 seconds for videos that you post to Facebook. When you're using a text status update, it's important to include some sort of multimedia like an image, a photo album, or a video. Facebook is a low volume network, so don't post too frequently. Fans can get discouraged or disappointed or frustrated. One of the great things is that Facebook can help your business reach a large audience with some really great advertising tools. If you are interested, in, in receiving a video case study that will show you how Facebook can work using their Facebook ad campaigns, go ahead and let me know in the chat box. Tell me that you want the case study or just say yes. That's all I need to see. I don't want to take too much time away from you paying attention to the slides. So uh, go ahead and let me know if you're interested in a case study on how Facebook advertising works. Good. I see a few yeses coming in. That's terrific. Twitter is a place where people come to discover what's happening in the world. They're able to share information and post instantly, unfiltered, and make connections with other individuals and businesses. A business in almost any industry can see results using Twitter. And by looking at some of the most successful brands using it, some of the most popular industries using this tool are technology, food and beverage, retail, household products, entertainment, and believe it or not, in politics. Twitter is what's considered a microblogging site, meaning that the information posted is very, very short. It also means that there's a 140 character limit when writing posts. Ideally, your tweets should be 140 characters, but I would recommend you leave it at 120 characters because if people retweet your content, you don't want important information to be left off. 
Twitter is a high volume network, so you can share more here because of its fast paced nature. And it's really the fastest way to reach your audience and provide great customer service to your clients and prospects. LinkedIn's a very different environment. LinkedIn connects professionals from all over for networking purposes. There's another new one out there called Alignable. Uh, you can send me an email and I'll send you some information about Alignable. That's another good B2B social channel that's really getting its traction now. In a recent social media marketing industry report, LinkedIn has surpassed Facebook as the number one social media platform for B2B, business to business marketers. There are now over half a billion people on LinkedIn, which is now also, by the way, owned by Microsoft. LinkedIn's a low volume network, so make sure your content doesn't dominate somebody's feed. At a minimum, three or more times a week, but don't go more than five. LinkedIn's a platform where you want to establish expertise in your business and network with others in your industry. Networking is a great way to improve your overall business strategy. And then there's Pinterest. That's like a virtual bulletin board that allows users to find and curate images and videos. This platform allows you to use visual assets like photos or graphics or infographics as a type of social currency that supplements web pages, blog posts, or other text-based media. It's very visual. You'll want to use interesting, beautiful, high-quality images. Think about showcasing your product in action. In terms of frequency, Pinterest moves fast, so you'll want to pin about five times a week, no more than ten. By using Pinterest for your business, you'll be able to increase visibility and link to your website, which is going to improve your search engine optimization, or SEO, enabling people to more easily find your site. Instagram, mobile editing and sharing app that can help you create stunning images. This one tends to be used by millennials more than anybody else. Posting two to three times a week is a great way to go about it. Provide visual, creative content, inspiration, connecting with your customers. So now that you're familiar with the most popular social sites and the one that will work best for your organization's goals and target audience, the next step is to set up your page. Once you've chosen a platform, you're ready to set it up. You'll want to complete your profile and brand with the proper information, maybe a bio. Make sure you've got contact information out there so people can reach you easily. Customize your page as much as you can. On some platforms, you can even customize the theme color for your page to match all of your other branding. And now that you're familiar with the most popular social sites and one that will work best for your goals and audience, let's move on. Once you've got things all set up and ready to go, what you need to do is let people know you're out there. Stand at the top of the mountain. Invite people. Announce your presence. You've got to tell them you're out there. It's no longer build and they will come. You want to be sure you let your email subscribers know you're on social media too. This is low-hanging fruit. You already have a connection with your email contacts who know and love you, which means they're likely to find you on social media. And plus, they're used to communicating with you through email, so this is a natural way to spread the word to your loyal contact base. You can give them more of an incentive to follow you, let them know what they'll get by liking your page or following your profile. And on your website, another great opportunity to build your social network. Current and potential customers are visiting your site every day, so be sure to use clickable icons to all of your social media sites and capture that traffic. And don't forget about sharing your profile link to your other social profiles. Just because someone follows you on Twitter doesn't mean they aren't also following you on Facebook and vice versa. So don't be afraid to put your Twitter handle on your Facebook page and, and vice versa. 
And sometimes it's not enough to expect your audience to find you, even for those who would love what you offer on social media. They may not have the time or awareness to seek out your page. So one of the most effective, although a little more time-consuming methods of building your network is to seek out your existing and target audience in order to engage with their page. When someone follows you on one social network and engages with you, search those people out when you begin a new network. Check them out, find them, and invite them to follow you on the other social channels. Interact and engage with them. When people are engaging with you on social media, engage back. Let them know you're listening. And following organizations and individuals who are like you will have a couple of benefits for building your network. First, you'll be able to see how they use social media. Pay attention to their activity that gets the most engagement. So, for example, do you see they get tons of likes when they share articles about industry trends? Do they get lots of shares when they post videos? Well, it's likely your target audience will be similar, so you'll probably see the same success if you test it out with your own social pages. Now, once even a few people follow your page, what are you going to share? Well, useful, engaging, visual, emotional content. That's what gets people sharing your stuff, and that's what you want. Visuals are a vital aspect of content that make your posts really engaging. In fact, 67% of consumers believe that images are a very important factor when selecting and purchasing a product. And once you start posting content, you're going to recognize what works better for your audience. It's still a good idea to use a variety of content to keep your audience interested in your page. Take a look at this one, where you find people who are putting before and after photos up there. That's a great way to figure out or get a chance to see what people really like. And if you can demonstrate the benefits of doing business with you with pictures that are as obvious as these, showing the kind of service that they can expect from you, you can be sure that your social pages will grow. Part of creating great content is including keywords and hashtags that are relevant to what you're sharing. They help catch your audience's attention. So what's the difference between keywords and hashtags? Well, they're both used to categorize people and posts to help searchers find what and who they're looking for. So there are a couple of small differences. Hashtags are specific to content. You wouldn't use a hashtag to refer to another user. Take a look at this Instagram example. When searching for dog, you see all the conversation about dogs. But when you see the keyword dog, then you see a lot more activity and you see people that have the word dog in their handle. And if you're looking to save time or get a little inspiration on what you might post, you can find ideas just about anywhere. Start by looking at the content on your own website. Think about what's new on your site, even products or services you've listed there. And you can share content you've already shared on one site with your other social media networks too. And don't forget about your emails. The ultimate goal of the posts you share should drive people to your website through a link or to an email sign-up form. So let's talk more about sharing your emails on social media. By sharing your email on social media, you're able to get in front of more people rather than if you just sent it to your list. Anyone who sees your email on social media who isn't already on your list can opt to subscribe, so they'll receive messages straight to their inbox in the future. And it can be a relief to know you don't have to create every piece of content you share. You can share content of others, which not only saves you time, but also, also helps you build relationships and increase your following. Share posts from your target audience. Share content from similar businesses to help build credibility. Curate content from credible sources, and then add your own spin. The last thing I want you to think about in terms of content 
as it really matters when you're marketing today is whether it's social media or email marketing, you've got to strike the right balance that will help your customers or potential customers know, like, and trust you. No one likes to be sold to all the time, which is why the 80-20 rule is important. And this rule means you need to provide 80% valuable or interesting content, which gives you the right about 20% of the time to have something promotional, selling, if you will. And it may seem overwhelming to think about logging into each social media platform separately to create your new posts and monitor engagement of your followers. Well, this is where you might want to consider some time-saving tools to help you maximize your efforts. One example is My Social Suite. There's also Buffer and Hootsuite. They enable you to schedule posts up to a year in advance and then monitor what kind of activity you're getting on each post and on each channel. And now that you've got some ideas on what to post, I want to switch gears for a moment and talk about social advertising. How many of you, by a show of hands, have ever used social media advertising? Go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, it looks like not too many of you. See, social media alone is great, but the truth is that organic reach or just reaching people with posts is limited. In fact, one study reported that faces, uh, rather pages on Facebook have a 2% natural reach when you don't pay for your ads. So seeing ads on social media is one of the top ways that users learn about any type of business or nonprofit. It's one of the best ways to extend your reach no matter what you're trying to achieve. When social media users see an ad, about 25% respond by visiting the location or the website, and about 14 to 16% will take action, like purchasing a product or service. So how does it work? Well, you pick out a message, something relevant that your audience would want to see. You want to define that audience, and we can help you do that. And then you add a text or image or video to help support your image. And then lastly, select a daily budget. The great thing about social media ads is that you can easily set a budget, monitor it, and never overspend it. As I mentioned earlier, we're more than happy to send you a Facebook advertising case study. Let me tell you a little bit more about one of the case studies that we can shoot out to you. Uh, we have a travel agent client who has done now four campaigns with us. One of the more recent ones was where she wanted to sell some travel packages. We ran a campaign for her and in just two days that Facebook campaign generated $51,000 in sales. That's right, $51,000 in sales in just two days and it only cost her $700 to run those ads. It's pretty extraordinary. So once again, if you're interested in getting a copy of that case study, uh, well, we'd be very, very happy to send that to you. Advertising on social media, when you do it right, helps you gain an unfair advantage over your competition. And there are lots of social platforms that have advertising options. Here are the top eight, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, and so on. One of the benefits of being active on social media is to turn those leads into loyal customers, and that's where email marketing comes into play. Remember the funnel I talked about earlier? I wanted to bring this back into the conversation because in today's world, we utilize our existing customers and fans to connect with new customers. That's exactly what social media marketing can do for you. What I want to do is just to ask you a quick question here and ask you whether you'd like a free 15-minute marketing consultation with me. Uh, just answer yes, no, or not sure, please contact me. If you're interested in that free consultation, we'll show you a link later on, and you just uh, go to that URL. In fact, I'll put it in the uh, chat box for you to make it easy. Uh, there's no sales pitch involved. What we'll do is help find out 
exactly how we might be able to help you grow your business by doing a diagnosis to see where you may be having some marketing challenges today. So once again, I've uh, put that in the chat box for you. Uh, you'll see it up on screen later also. What you see in the chat box is a clickable link. And if you're joining us uh, on a replay, uh, you'll find that link a little bit later on in this video. What we need to do is leverage both platforms, email and social, to get the maximum exposure we're seeking. Email helps you send a communication directly to your subscribers. It has a 97% deliverability rate. And I mentioned a few minutes ago that Facebook texts only get about 2% of your fans. With email and social media together, you get 73% more engagement, you get 57% on average more customers, 39% more business referrals. So it's pretty easy to take care of these things. You can add an email sign-up link to your profile. The platforms like Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn all have a spot for your website and social media links where you can uh, add the sign-up link directly into your company's bio or description. You can join our mailing list. If you're using Constant Contact or some other email marketing service, uh, this is one feature that's available free on Constant Contact. It's an extra charge on other services like MailChimp. Uh, but if you text the word newsworthy to 42828, you'll be able to join our mailing list straight from your phone. You can add an email sign-up tab to your Facebook page as well. Easily done when you're using email marketing services. They build it right into Constant Contact. You can add an email sign-up link within a post on Pinterest. And you can use email metrics to make social decisions. For example, let's say in your email you have those social icons down at the bottom of your email. You can actually see who's clicking on which links and determine which of those uh, social channels is getting the most traction for you. It's important for you to realize that email marketing alone provides a return on investment of over 44 to 1. That means that for every dollar you spend on email marketing, you can expect an average return of over $44. Spend $100, you get $44,000. 44, Here's a company that attended one of our workshops in 2012. At the time, they were flat in their annual sales at about $50,000 a year. They were spending a lot of money on Google AdWords and not getting any results. They started using email marketing in the middle of 2013, and by 2016, they grew from 50000 a year in revenue to a million dollars last year. They stopped using AdWords in 2013. The only way they market their business is with email marketing. For this client of the Countess Group, the return on investment for email is over 750 to 1. So what do you do next? Well, get started with your social media activity if you haven't done it already. Pick your platform, start a business profile, and then post away. So we've covered most of the content here. My message to you is you really can do this. And we, the Countess Group, are here to help you out. What we can help you accomplish is we can help you gain an unfair advantage over your competitors. And we can coach you, or we can do it for you, either way. I'd encourage you to take a look at a couple of workshops that we have coming up. They are uh, in July. Uh, we have an email marketing workshop that's coming up. Uh, that's on July the 12th. And to sign up for that one, uh, you would go to this link that I've put in the uh, chat box. It's bit.ly slash July 12 workshop. If you have your phone handy, you can snap that QR code that you see on the screen right now. 
that'll take you to a landing page where you can get more information about that event. I'd really encourage you to consider it. Uh, by the way, if you um, uh, do sign up for that event, you'll get a free hour of consulting when you register to attend. Also, we have another workshop that's coming up on July the 13th. And I'll go ahead and put that in the chat box as well. And that one is on LinkedIn. So on July 12, you get a free hour of consulting from us if you registered today. And you can also sign up for the workshop on LinkedIn, an all-day workshop. They're in Orlando at the Marriott Residence Inn. Once again, you can snap the QR code, and that'll take you right to a page that gives you more information. But here's a bonus for you. If you sign up for both, you'll save $100 automatically. There's no promo code required. Just go to one of those pages, and you'll see an option to sign up for the second one, and it takes $100 off when you attend the two workshops. So I uh, hope you find that of interest to you. We help you gain an unfair advantage over your competition with targeted marketing campaigns that really do work. We don't believe in spray and pray, as I mentioned earlier. Also, between now and June 30th, and if you're watching this on a replay, once again, it's before June 30th of 2017, you'll want to take advantage of 75% or more off on Constant Contact, you can get it for just $5 a month. There's no promo code needed. The discount's automatically applied. And if you act today, you'll also get a reusable mobile responsive template free of charge. Here, once again, is the way to uh, contact me to get a free 15-minute consultation. We've got that already in the chat box. It's bit.ly slash meet dash with dash Ken. You can find more information about all of our upcoming workshops and the ones closest in. Go to bit.ly slash tcg dash events. And that's what that page looks like. Obviously, it'll change depending on what day you're there on that website. We'll have different events coming up. Uh, over the course of time, but these are the events that we have coming up uh, over the next few weeks. My name is Ken Countess. I'm Managing Director of the Countess Group. We help you gain an unfair advantage over your competition. If you need a speaker for an upcoming event, you can reach out to us. Uh, we are available to speak at rotaries, chambers, associations, trade shows, and so on. I want to thank you for uh, watching this webinar, whether you've joined us live or on a replay. And once again, feel free to reach out to us anytime. We look forward to uh, giving you a hand and helping your business grow. Thanks for attending.